Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on the general F test. Alright, so before we get into the details of the general F test, I want to talk about uh, the difference between a simple and a composite hypothesis. And this is all going to be in the context of a one way ANOVA. So, in a one way ANOVA, we assume that the variances of all the groups are the same, but that the groups have possibly different means. So, in this first example, we're just going to assume that we have three groups. All right, so I could have just said here i equals 1, 2, and 3. And in those two groups, we can have different types of hypotheses. So here's one possible hypothesis. This one is a simple hypothesis. It just says that the mean for group 1 and group 2 is the same, and the alternative says that they're different. All right, so this is a simple hypothesis. It's the same type of hypothesis that we've seen before in the two-sample t-test. Now we'll get a bit more complicated. We're going to generate a composite hypothesis. So this is similar to the type of hypothesis that was used in the one-way ANOVA F-test. And now we're basically going to generalize it to be used, that similar F-test to be used in different scenarios. So this is exactly the hypothesis used in the one-way ANOVA F-test. Here the null says that, that the means for all the groups are the same. And the alternative it says that at least one of the means are different. Right? And the reason that this is a composite hypothesis is that this alternative doesn't describe one particular model. In fact, there are many possible different ways that this model could be, this alternative hypothesis could come up. Uh, here's one. The first one is that, oh, in fact, the mean for groups 1 and 2 are the same, but they're different from group 3. Or the, the mean for group 2 and 3 is the same, but that's different from group 1. Or groups means for 1 and 3 are the same, but not the same as 2. Or all three of them have different means. All right, so it's composite because this alternate, uh, this alternative hypothesis has, in this case, at least four possibilities. All right, and so we're going to attack these two problems and from a hypothesis testing standpoint with two different approaches. If it's a simple hypothesis, so for instance, we're just comparing the equality of two means. Now remember, we're in the scenario that we actually have three groups. But at this point, the hypothesis is only about the means for group 1 and group 2. All right, then in this scenario, we use exactly the same formulas that we had for the t-test and confidence intervals with the two-sample t-test. All right, so these should look very uh, familiar. And what's now going to change is the degrees of freedom here and the calculation of the standard error. Well, in fact, the standard error calculation is exactly the same. But within the standard error calculation, what's going to change is the way that we estimate the pooled standard deviation. All right, so the two things that change, one is that the degrees of freedom is no longer n1 plus n2 minus 2, but instead it's the degrees of freedom for the whole population altogether. So in this case, it's n1, n2, all the way up to ni, if there were i groups. In this case, we just have n1, n2, and n3. And then we subtract off capital I, which is the number of groups that we have. In the simple example that we're thinking of so far, that's just 3. So another way to write this is just to write n minus I, where n is the total sample size that we have. That's the first modification. The second modification is with the calculation of the pooled variance, from which we can get the pooled standard deviation. And the key here is now we use the sample standard deviations of all the groups, not just the two groups that we're interested in. All right, so this calculation right here is just a weighted average of the sample standard deviations from all groups. And I wanted to point out here that this degrees of freedom also shows up in the denominator here, right? just like it did in the two-sample example. And so we could altern alternatively write uh, this in this notation. <clears throat> all right, so this is a way of testing two means. And it looks basically exactly like we have for the two-sample t-test, but the degrees of freedom and the calculation of the pooled variance change. So here's an example. Uh, this is going to be an example uh, using the mice diet data set that we've looked at before. In this example, relative to what we had before, we add this LS means line. So this LS means line is going to compare the means across all the diets in this group. And here it's going to create confidence intervals for those. And we're going to use the Tukey Kramer adjustment for uh, all pairwise comparisons. If you don't know what that means, you should click on the link here to go to the uh, multiple comparison 
mini lecture. All right, so once we have that, now we can calculate uh, p-values for tests of differences between any pair of means. Remember that each of these tests is just a simple hypothesis. Um, alternatively, we can uh, construct confidence limits for uh, the means themselves as well as the difference between any two pair of means. And the formulas that are used to construct these confidence limits uh, are similar to the formula formulas used for the, uh, that I gave on the previous slide, but here, since we've actually used the Tukey-Kramer adjustment, they're modified slightly. Again, you should see that lecture. All right, so the idea here is that the comparing two groups out of a number of groups is basically the same as doing a two-sample t-test, but now you use all the information to estimate the standard deviation and the pooled standard deviation and the degrees of freedom. But moving on, now we're interested in testing some composite hypotheses, in particular the one-way ANOVA uh, f-test. So for any composite hypothesis, uh, here's just one example. This happens to be the uh, hypothesis for that one-way ANOVA f-test. For these composite hypotheses, that I want you to think about these hypotheses as actually comparing models. So then the question is, well, what model does this correspond to, and what the null hypothesis, and what model does the alternative hypothesis correspond to? All right, so the null hypothesis just says all the groups have the same mean. So in fact, all the data just come from exactly the same distribution. The alternative hypothesis, at least in the extreme, says that possibly all the means for all the groups are different. So here the observations that come from a normal distribution whose mean depends on the group membership. All right, so this alternative hypothesis is going to be our full model, and the null hypothesis is going to be our reduced model. All right, and so we're going to use the general f-test any time we're comparing means and we have this full and reduced model construction. All right, so how do we actually calculate this f-test? Well, here's the, the uh, process that you would go through. The first thing you do is you calculate what's called the extra sum of squares. In order to do that, you need to find the residual sum of squares, otherwise known as the sum of squares error for the reduced model, and the sum of squares error for the full model. We'll see this as in a SAS example in a second. All right, so once we've calculated the extra sum of squares, then you'd also calculate the extra degrees of freedom. This is just the difference in the number of parameters for the mean in the two models. All right, the reduced model here only has one parameter for the mean, and the in this one way ANOVA F test, and in this case, the number of mean parameters in the full model is going to be the number of groups that we have. All right, so the extra degrees of freedom is just the difference between those two. Now we're going to take what we calculated in part one, the extra sum of squares, and divide by the extra degrees of freedom. And now we're going to use our estimate of the variance from the full model. So this is the estimate of the pooled variance from the full model, and I'll show you where to get that in the SAS uh, output in a second. Once we calculate that F statistic, then we compare this to an F distribution with the numerator degrees of freedom being our extra degrees of freedom that we calculated in step two and the denominator degrees of freedom being the number of mean parameters that we also used in step two. And the question is whether, what's the probability that the F statistic we calculated here is greater than the F distribution with that numerator and denominator degrees of freedom. So let's look at an example. Here's an example of using, uh, again, looking at this mice data set. And it, now we're going to make a different hypothesis compared to what we did before when we did the one-way ANOVA F test. Here we're going to say, okay, the NP group is special, right? This is the group that um, was given a diet that they could eat whatever they want, which is not the normal diet that laboratory mice are given. Usually they're given a controlled diet. So we're going to separate this group off to be treated differently, and then we're going to say, is there a, the same mean amongst the remaining diets? Right, so in particular, the diet that the mice normally get, is that any different from these extra... Uh, calorie-restricted diets that we're trying out. So we can state this somewhat succinctly uh, using standard English, and then the question is now we need to translate it into statistical notation. So again, we still have uh, the same model we've been looking at, and now we're going to specify I equals 1 as being the NP diet group. So then we can write our hypotheses like this. Our null hypothesis says that 
there's some mean that's common for all the groups except for the NP group. And the alternative hypothesis just says that in those other groups, at least one of the means is different. All right, now if we want to think about this in terms of models, we can say that the null model says, all right, there's one mean for group one and a different mean for all the other groups. Whereas the alternative hypothesis says there's a different mean for every group. All right, so it should be clear here what we might need to, to generate in order to fit the first model is a new variable that says, are you in the NP group or not? So that's exactly what we're going to do in the SAS code up in the data step. We're going to create a new variable called the group, and that's going to be one if the, the mice was on, the mouse was on diet NP, and it's going to be zero otherwise. So now one, group equals one specifies the NP group, and group equals zero specifies all the rest. All right, and we're going to run two different proc GLM statements. The first one is going to be the full model, and this is just going to have the full diet, right? So this is going to treat each group completely separately and find a new, a different mean for each of those groups. In contrast, the reduced model just finds two means, one mean for the NP group and a different mean for the non-NP groups. All right, when we fit this model, we're going to get two different pieces of output, uh, two different ANOVA tables, right? An ANOVA table just compares the model that you're giving it to, giving it, versus the model with only one mean, right? So that's not the comparison we want to do. The comparison we're trying to do is an unrestricted model, that is, each group has a different mean, versus this reduced model where group one has one mean and the other groups all have a separate mean. All right, so the numbers that we're going to need to do the F-test calculation are the sums of squares errors. So this line right here is the sum of squares errors for the full model. This is the sum of squared errors for the reduced model. We're going to need the degrees of freedom. So this tells you how many parameters um, are associated with the, well, the difference. We're going to need the difference between the number of parameters for the mean here and the number of parameters for the mean here. So we're going to need 5 minus 1 is going to be the extra degrees of freedom. The last thing we're going to need is the um, estimate of sigma squared in the full model. So this is going to be the pooled variance for the full model. So this 44.599. Right, so those are the pieces that we need. And the calculation we actually proceed on is this one right here. So we calculate the extra sum of squares, which is the difference between these residual sum of squares or error sum of squares in the two groups. We need the extra degrees of freedom, which is just the difference in the degrees of freedom associated with those first lines in the ANOVA table. And we then calculate our F statistic. In this case, it turned out to be almost 30. 30 is a very large F statistic, and if we compare that to an F distribution with four numerator degrees of freedom and 343 denominator degrees of freedom, we find an extremely small p-value. So what does this tell us? This tells us that we would reject in all hypothesis that the reduced model is adequate. And so it's giving us evidence that the mean is not the same for all the non-NP groups but there's still some difference between those groups in their means. All right, so to wrap up, I just want to point out that you use t-tests when you're testing for simple hypotheses about the means for both doing the tests and the confidence intervals. You use f-tests when you have composite hypotheses about the means. When you're doing the f-tests, you want to think about these tests as actually comparing models, a full versus a reduced model. And you're going to fit both of these models and then compute a p-value. We're going to see much later when we get into um, two-way ANOVA and so forth that we're actually going to have uh, SAS or other software is going to generate a number of these F-tests that we might be of interest to us automatically. Thank you.